Hi guys, welcome to part one of Solaris Basic Commands. Let's get right down to business. One of the most common commands you will use in the Solaris operating system is your PWD. This is your present working directory. And this will tell you where you are in the directory tree at any time if you forget. Now to see the contents of a directory, you could use the ls command, which will show you the files and directories within that directory that you are in. You can use the ls with an a to show hidden files, and all the files with a dot in front of them are the hidden files. And finally, you can use an ls-l for more details such as file attributes, user ownership, and file sizes. This gives you a more robust listing for the ls command. You can use the cd command to change to different directories. Let's say, of course, it means change directory. You cd user bin. Let's go ahead and go in there. And then we can check it with the pwd command to make sure that's where we are. That is where we are. Now you can use the c space dot dot command to move up one directory level. Let's try that. That should put us in the user directory. Let's check it again with the pwd command. That is where we are. And finally, you can use the cd command without any options at all, which will change you to the home directory of whichever user you're logged in as. Since we are logged in as a root, we type cd, it is going to take us right back to the root directory. Alright, you can use the clear command to refresh your screen here. Let's check what directory we're in with a pwd. Now let's make a directory. We're going to use the make dir command, and we're just going to call it new dir to keep it simple. We're going to cd to new dir, change directory, check where we're at. Now we're going to use two methods to create files. We're going to use touch, which will create an empty file, and we're going to call it file1. And we're going to use vi to make file2. And in addition to creating this, it's going to open a text editor so we can type something in here. This is file number 2. So I've added some text into this also. Let's clear it and see where we're at. And let's look at the two files that we created here. If you want to view the contents of the file, you can use the cat command. So let's do a cat file 2. And we're going to see if the text that I entered shows up here. And there it is. That is how you view the content of a file. Now look at the permissions above of these two files. You can see you have three octets here in the permission section. That's user, group, and other. You can see the user group does not have executable permission, which is this third section right here. So you could use the chmod command with a user plus x, which means for the user octet, you're going to add executable. You can use a minus x, r, or w also to take away read, write, or executable permissions. Let's try this, and let's see if our filed one now has executable permissions. And it does, so that was successful. So we are still in this directory. We still have two files. You can use the rm command to remove a file. And then we'll look again. Now there's only one file here. Let's back up a directory using cd space dot dot. Now we are back in root. Let's say that we want to remove that directory, which was called new dir. Let's try that with the rm command. And remember, there is a file inside this directory. It says, uh-oh, it's not going to allow you to do that. Now you could use the rm dir command, which is one option to get rid of the directory. However, an easier way, you can do an rm-rf recursive and forced. And this will force a director directory to be deleted. And that worked. So we're still in root, and you can see the new directory that we created is now gone. You do want to be careful with the rm-rf command though, especially when in root, as you could accidentally delete your whole operating system if you're not careful. So the next thing is we're going to go over some disk commands here. To see the disk space available on your disks here, you can use the df-k. That's going to be in kilobytes, so all these numbers are in kilobytes here. This is for all the mounted systems that are on your machine. And you can use a df-h if you want to see this in gigabyte. 
it's the same thing, but it lists it in gigabytes, so it is a bit easier to read. And it shows your percentage here, so you can also make sure that you aren't approaching 100% capacity on any of your disk slices. So to look at your physical disks, you're going to use the format command and you're going to enter zero. Now this isn't a physical disk technically, this is a virtual disk because we are in a Oracle VM virtual box. But for all intents and purposes, it is an actual disk. And once in the format menu, we're going to do P to enter the partition menu. Once in the partition menu, we're going to enter P to print the partition table. As you can see here, slice 4 and slice 5 have about 5 and 6 gigabyte. However, slice 6 does not have any space assigned to it. So let's say we want to create uh, slice 6. I'm going to head and press 6 at the partition menu. That's the one I want to access. I'm going to leave it unassigned with the same permissions. And for the starting cylinder, I am going to go with 1504 because you can see that slice 5 ends at 1503 and slice 7 doesn't start till 3615 so you have all those cylinders in between that gap to use so I'm going to start with the next available cylinder 1504 and let's just say I'm going to make it 6 GB 6 gigabyte now you have to use the label command to anytime you change the partition to make it permanent so we'll do label and it was successful now we're going to do a P and look at our partition table again, and we should see slice 6 now has 6 gigabytes assigned to it. Now that we have that made, we're going to quit out of the partition and format menus. We're going to clear our screen. Now you have to make a file system for this partition that we just created. We can't use it until we make a file system for it. So you're going to use the new FS command and you're going to use the R disk, which is the raw disk. That is the one you're going to create a new file system on. And you're going to go ahead and construct a new file system. And sometimes I will do a disk check just to make sure that the file system looks good using the FSCK-Y. That does look good. So now we have our slice 6 ready, but we kind of need a mount point for it. So I'm going to just create a mount point called slice 6. Now what I'm, I'm creating a directory, but we are going to attach it to that new file system. So I'm going to do a mount command, and I'm going to point toward that disk here. And then I'm going to tell it I want it to mount to slice 6. So you use mount, your disk path, and then the mount point and let's go ahead and see if that works. Looks good, no errors. And when we again bring this up, you can see at the very bottom of your DFK, you now have slice 6 mounted under the slice 6 directory, and it now has 6 gigabytes available in that directory. You also have the unmount command, which is umount, and if we want, we can simply unmount that slice 6 bring it back and it is now gone. So you can use the mount or the umount command. Alright, let's look at how to add a user to your box and also how to add a group. You can use the user add command to add your user and you can use the group add command to add a group. Now to view the users on the machine you can look at your past WD file you do that by using the cat command, as we discussed, to look at the contents of the file. At the bottom, you can see the user one that we created. And let's go ahead and clear the screen. And let's look at your cat Etsy group file. This shows the groups on the box. And again, at the bottom, you can see the group one that we created. Let's clear this. And we're going to clean up these users that we just made using the user del command, user delete. And same thing with the group del, group delete. And we're going to clean it up, and then we're back where we started. Another very common task you'll have in Solaris is to look at your processes. And my favorite PS command is the PSEF, which is going to show you the processes running on the box. And let's say if this is too much info for you, and you just want to specify a certain process you want to look at, 
you could then pipe it, which is going to send the output of this command to a different command, and use a grep, which is like a search tool. And let's just do cron, for example. I want to search for any processes that might have the keyword cron in them. And here you go. So you can use PSEF to see your entire process list, and you can pipe it to a grep search and put in a keyword there. And that's going to narrow down your screen output and make it much easier to find a particular process. Thank you for watching part one of Solaris commands, and I hope you will come back for part two. I hope you enjoyed part one of Solaris basic commands, and I hope you will return for part two. Thank you.